Hi everyone, Oops. welcome to the channel. <laughs> welcome if you're new, I'm Stacy, and today I'm going to be attempting to do a beautiful like landscape ocean scene with um, pastels. That's, that's the thought pattern anyways. I have out my pan pastels, um, my Tower of Pan Pastel stuff. I just replaced the wands on, on the, or the tips on the wands that needed it. Because these, these got really dry and like super hard and crusty. I don't know why. Because my sponges didn't get dry and crusty. They're still pretty pliable. And a little dirty, I should probably put that over there. <laughs> um, but I have out an array of these I've washed multiple times of different sponges and applicators for blending. These are um, soft tools for blending. And then my wands, which I store in this here little cup, will be over here. And then this is just what Pan Pastel's uh, extra tidbits of things come in. When you get the tower of um, pastels, they come all, I can just show you. It's easier to just show you. I have out my two trays of pastels, of the current pastels that I own. These guys. Um, these here are metallics. I went and bought a metallic set. And then um, I bought the, I don't know what I was thinking, I bought the um, pastels or the portrait set and it came with a bunch of different colors and then I've also been gifted a blue set that came with blues and grays so I have some doubles I have doubles of um I think phthalo and ultramarine is that those yeah ultramarine blue shade and phthalo blue um Payne's gray neutral gray Payne's gray neutral gray and then the blues, I have doubles of a lot of them. And I have three whites, which actually, there's a divot in this one. So I do actually use quite a lot of white. Um, some of them, when they come in their, in their little tray, they'll be a little broke up. So I just put a lid on the ones that are crumbly because they're still usable. They're just messier. Um, so I have... This one, are you the same color? No, this is ultramarine blue tint and this is phthalo blue tint. They're pretty close, but um, yeah. When you get them, if you could buy a stack of them, they are screwed together like this. So that you can, you just unscrew and then they have a lid. And oftentimes they'll have an additional cup with, um, with some soft tools in them for you to utilize. So that's that. Let's put my white and my green back. But um, I would like to play with my pan pastels. Just put that over there. Ooh, messy already. These are less messy than my Soho's or my Mungio's. My mon I just put up a video of a cloud practice with Mungio paints. Um. I don't know where how to set these. I'm gonna set this one up there. Kapow! And then this is my other set. Well, the other s selection that has. And you can get these palette things to hold your um, pan pastels pretty cheap online. Um, the sets of pastels you can get the portrait set. I would recommend doing the. Um, Instead of doing the portrait set, do the tints set, the um, regular shades, and then darks. Because these come in pure color, and then the tint is the light color, and the shade is a darker color, and then the darks is even darker. So there's a lot. There's 92 colors in the pan pastels. Where did I set that sucker? There it is. And I have the this set, the, the portrait set, I cut this off the box to keep so that I'd have it. And the pack of three, um, and then I bought an extra one because <laughs> I really wanted like gold. So there's, or no, I, what one came with? Rich gold? 
rich gold, light gold, and bronze came with, and bronze. So this is the one that I bought separate, copper, because it's beautiful, and I love copper. But there are 92 colors in Pan Pastels, as you can see, um, and there's an, an, a wide array of medium, well, an array of mediums. There's metallics and there's pearls, and then... I imagine since I bought these, they've come out with even more stuff. I left these out because I need to mark down which ones I have because I would like to buy some more in the next couple of um, weeks. So I have some browns and I have some purples and yellows, um, my golds, um, the tints. I have purple and burnt sienna, red iron oxide and um, this is red ox iron oxide tint and this one is red iron oxide shade. So there's a middle color which is red iron oxide and then there's red iron oxide dark as well. And I believe they have that the four color variation for all the colors except for maybe the metallics. And I have a bright red. It just came with a weird selection of colors which I guess can be portrait colors but I don't know. At any rate we're, we've got these guys out. I'm just going to leave them stacked up there so that I can pick and choose what I want. And then I got out my Soho um, set of 120 uh, soft pastel half sticks. I, these are non-toxic. Yeah. Um, so I don't believe they're like thought to be professional grade, but I really wanted them. I went back and forth and back and forth about these. Um, do I want them? Don't I? Yes? No? But look at all those glorious colors. And I figure for pa for playing with pastels and seeing if I even like the medium, this was a less expensive route than going and getting the professional brands when I don't even know if I want to actually utilize all of those, right? I think that makes sense. So, I am going to start with pan pastels because... This paper is, oops, I got stuff on there, pretty textured. And I want to go in with my wands and do a nice smooth glow on the piece. My reference photo, which I will put in the comments below, is a golden sunset over ocean waves. And I'm going to do like the best I can, you guys. This is me practicing. So I'm going to set these guys over here on top of the Soho's because we don't need those right now. These guys can live up there. We'll zoom in a squish so you can see what I'm doing. I feel like I should untape this from the table and scooch it down. Oops. Moved everything. <laughs> we'll just scooch it down here. Right about there. Let's focus, please. Thank you. And... I have this taped to the back of a, um, I keep the backs of uh, drawing pads, like the, the card back cardboard for um, taping down paper onto, because it's handy and it's cheap. Um, yeah, so that's why I do that. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see which colors I'm perusing. I'm going to go with, uh, I really want to use the gold, honestly. Like, I don't really have an orange. So maybe... I think I'm going to start with this uh, yellow ochre tint. Because this paper is pretty dark. And, um, yeah, and these go down smooth and soft and if you don't press too hard you won't fill up the tooth of your paper but I really don't want all of this super dark showing through um, I'm after doing clouds like white clouds and a blue sky on this same color of paper uh, and this is the earth tones pad set that I got I took one of the big sheets and cut it down um, I decided I don't really care for that that dark color right there. I'm going to leave it in the water, but not for the whole sky. I want to soften this 
gently like so and get kind of an even-ish now it's just like painting you guys with these pan pastels and they're less dusty and they're less dirty uh, they last forever I've had this set for three almost four years now um, so they're well worth the money if you want to invest in buying like one or two colors that you really like and trying them out on a piece. Maybe you like doing, doing flowers, you can get a set of um, three for like 20 bucks I think it is. I mean it's far cheaper to buy the bigger set but you should try them like one or two. You can even just get two colors. Um, and see if you like them. And do I want to do that down here? No. Yes. Just a like a dust, a dusting. I'll leave some of that showing like that. And if you hear a ding, it's because I have food cooking. I'm so hungry right now. Okay. So that's that color. And it looks kind of, I don't know, creamy on the, against the paper, it doesn't look like this, does it? It doesn't look as super creamy. But we're going to put lots of layers on here, right? Ideally. Maybe, I don't want to do that. Let's go in with, I feel like I should have out... The raw umber and possibly I really want to put gold in there <laughs> I'm fighting the urge to put gold in there um, I need a couple hot spots so I'm gonna try um, what do I want to do here decisions decisions that's a terrible color um it's white, but not. Maybe we'll maybe we'll start with white. We'll start with white, and put in our sun right here. And then there's a glow over here, and then there's some like streaks of yellow white through here. Maybe some of this dioxazine in yellow. Ooh, no, that browns that right out, doesn't it? It's not terrible. See, this is why I want more colors. Don't do gold. <laughs> Don't do the gold. I'm going to go in with this bright orangey color. These are kind of hard. I didn't realize these were so hard. But that's all right. I'm just... Do that, and then I would like a horizon line, a nice solid one. So I have this ruler that I've used so much that I've rubbed off <laughs> a lot of the, uh, the numbers. But it still works for a nice straight edge, right? Maybe we'll go pretty halfway. How about that? And I'm going to go in and, and I think I said these didn't have num names on them, but they do. Um, well, maybe they don't. Yeah, the Soho's don't. It just says, yeah. A number, non-toxic. Yeah, there's no names on these, which is fine. I'm not worried about it. These are my uh, let's let's practice pastels, right? So let's not stress about it too much. Which is that? And I'm gonna keep this loose and free. That is the name of the game for this. And then this kind of nebulous looking clouds over here. Kind of like um, 
Well, nebulous. Kind of like um, a galaxy painting. Which is cool. Clouds are fun. Because you can get in here and pretty much do whatever you want for clouds. Um, use your reference photo as a guide, but you don't have to stick to it directly at all. Um, you can use it for color placements <clears throat> to get a gist of flow. Pull that up. And I'm going to see if I can run that over there. Gently pull that extra that's floating on the surface of the paper around. Gently, barely touching the surface. Kind of pull that out like that. We're going to probably put some brights in here too. And yeah, so I am not providing a PDF because this is this is one of those let's intuitive paint kind of situations. If you don't have pan pastels and all you have is just regular watercolor paper and your pastels, you can get a lot of these same effects um, using Q-tips. Uh, makeup brushes. Some some makeup brushes are soft enough that you can do this with them. And then what else? Paper towels. I use paper towels a lot for blending. And my fingers. I l like getting in there with my fingers. It is enjoyable to me. A lot of people don't like that, but I really do. Um, how are we looking so far? Oh, it's pretty neat so far. Okay. Let's not get carried away with being pleased right quick. All right, so when I use a color, I like to prop it up like this so that I know I used that color. So we, we leave it poking out of its little cubby, like so. Um, and then for my darker line, let me use the umber. And if you don't have umber, just choose a color that you that you like for your dark line and drop it in soft and blend it out with your finger and yeah, see how see how it feels. It's just a piece of paper. If you don't like it, you can always throw it away and start again. Right? These wands are like eight bucks. They come in a set of four, I believe. With X few extra little um, pads to put on them but you can take your pads off and flip them over and use the other side as well um, and they are washable so if you want to wash them in the kitchen sink with a little bit of soap and water and reuse you can um, I have discovered over time that if you leave them just out like this they do get little pads do get hard which is puzzling to me because my wands did these sponges didn't get hard at all um, but they're super useful super useful do I want to drop in a hard I kind of want to drop in a slightly harder line back there but I'm going to leave well enough alone for now. I might crisp that up later. We've got waves here and here. So fun. Okay. Now remember this whole painting is going to be um, gold. Variations on golden yellows and browns and possibly maybe a touch of violet for shadows because I don't really care for using black for shadows but a purple tone for your shadows can be really super amazing here let's let's drop that in right there instead of using black See how dark? It still reads super dark, right? And just pat it in. You don't have to blend. You can pat down. 
like so. And then put a little more in right here. Like that. And then pat down. And this, this can take as long as you want it to take. You can take uh, the evening and put down your base colors and then go, you know, go have lunch or dinner or watch a movie or do your nightly routine and then, um, you're the geese. <laughs> Spring has sprung. The geese have arrived. Um, maybe, and purple and oranges and yellows go well together. So. Yeah. Fun, fun times with pastels. How's that look? Good. Yeah, that crisps up that. It darkens the edge without darkening, dark, making it too dark. I feel like the black would be just a skosh too much. Yeah. And y'all, this is a real time painting, so it. Pardon the traffic. I will try to remember to um, dampen that background noise when I edit. Don't um, don't be like intimidated because this video is long. You can do part of it. You can paint with me th for a little while and then you know go do th other things and come back to your piece and we can paint together, like finish up later. Ooh, I dig it. All right, I'm. I want to blow on that really bad, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to let it be. There's bunches of little crumbs right there. I'm just going to let it be. I like this wave kind of walked in there. And then there's a little in there. And then... <gasps> Food's done. I'm so hungry, you guys. All right. And then there's a little bit of shadowing. Here. And then right out here, there's a wave rolling in. So I'm going to go ahead and put the shadow of that in with the residue of the other colors. That's And you can try to pick up some off your pastel if you don't want it to be too dark. But I want it, it's going to be like right about here. And it's rolling. And you can always put in darks later. Drag that around. My last piece, I, I did a cloud, just a poofy cloud practice, if you hadn't seen it yet. Um, it was a lot of fun. I blended with my fingers. I made a huge mess. It was amazing. And then there's another way of crashing right here. touch of the brown in here as well. It's raw umber, I believe, is what it is. There we go. That's the neighbors coming home. And there's another little, little there's another little guy right here. Right about here. Okay. Yeah, I'm digging this so far. Anybody else? Oh, so fun. <laughs> Ooh, just pat, pat, pat and give us some indications of where that wave is rolling and frothing right here. And we're going to add other colors. Pat some. I'm just patting the end of the chalk on page and my wave is rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We're gonna cut it off right right about there. There we go. That's where our wave is gonna be rolling in. And I like those textures. So I'm just gonna pass a little. Oh, got some gold in there. Nice. Yeah. I took that, pat that. I'm going to leave those textures though. I like them. Oh, I like that gold down there. Alright, let's, let's put some more of that in there. 
Where the... Mm -hmm. That one seemed really dark. I really want to use these metallics. What do you guys think? Should we? Get in here? Ooh. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, we should. Not a lot. Just... Oh my goodness. We're totally using this. Alright. <laughs> I got all excited. Look at that glow. No. Which other one would put, make this super fantastic would be this. I have the rich gold and I have the light gold. We're going to use those. Why? For fun. He's for fun. To give our little bit of cold glow going on. You see our yellow up there is reflecting and shine, shining in the water. I'm going to add a little bit of shine. Why not? And then some here. And let's prop that guy up so we remember that we used him. Don't be shy to blend your colors together. But don't blend too much. Padding is okay. Instead of swooshing. Swooshing. Technical terminology. And then we've got a nice glow under this frothy wave right here. And then we've got a nice glow going over here. Oh yeah. Digging it. Digging it. And then we have a nice glow on top of that froth here and there, but I want to put um, the white down first, I think. I'm pretty sure. Alright, yeah, I'm not going to blend this out too much down here because the texture of the paper makes it look like a sandy, a wet sandy beach, which is desirable. Alright, there's that, and then I think I'd like some more of a purple shade. What color are you? Kind of a, this one has kind of a, um, what do you call it? Plum shade to it, which I'm going to put down in the dark areas. I dig it. Mm. Hi guys, we're back. It is the next day. Um, had to had to pause and take care of a few things. But for you guys, it's been a hot second, and I'm moving right along. Still using this kind of brown plum color to get some um, wave effect in the sand. Good. How's that looking? I'm going to zoom in a little more. Let's straighten out our camera. There we go. Let's see. Kind of just lightly grazing the top of the paper and letting the textures pull through here and there. put in any oh, 
um, whites just yet, but I'm getting, I'm getting close. I'm getting quite close. All right. A little glow of white, yellow, gold, and a black back here. And then little hits of it here and there. How's that look? It's coming along pretty rapidly, actually. splash up right there and then let's see this has a bit of a high gloss on it at the top each one Take that rough end and graze it back here. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of sparkle where I need it to be. Make a little wiggly marks so that they're not uniform because waves tend to be pretty chaotic visually. things in my hands. Let's set these guys back down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on the sky a bit because I'd like a bit of darkness here. But the gold and the brown together make a really interesting effect. That I like, and if you look at the reference photo, you'll you'll see what I mean. It's kind of sparkly but shadowy at the same time, and this could have been because they played with filters on cameras, but I dig it, so we're gonna try to replicate it. Okay, and then a little bit here. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Maybe I maybe go a little bolder with my color so that it's a bit more dynamic. Create a little cloud chaos, right? A little bit of cloud chaos. Take that and back here. Here, 
Remember to keep your strokes at the bottom horizon line pretty thin and that will give you the um, illusion of distance because as things get farther away they get smaller so you don't want to get too large with your details in the background. Gentle, light, small little indications rather than bold and dark and then I'd like to come up a bit in some spots. Yeah, I dig that. Okay. It's very subtle, right? And then I'm gonna darken that horizon line back there. A little gold and a little brown. Gold. You know what? I turned this light off. Ta da! That feels better. I turned that light off while I was doing some stuff online because it really um, shines in the eye, and as far as placement is concerned, when I'm trying to look at my computer screens to do anything for any length of time. Touch more. I'd like it to be a touch more golden right here, but I have too much brown on here at the moment. That's fine, we'll finish up with their browns. Get some cool distance things going on. There. Brown and gold. And a padding. Direction lines and some more uh, dark clouds up here so that it feels more dynamic. It's not quite this dark in the reference photo, but I'm digging it. So, going with the flow. Going with the flow. That gold in there is really making that brown more glowy. So, that's nice. And if you don't have gold, you can use a, a nice. Um, go with your orange or a soft yellow to mix in with the, with your umber and see if that will help. And if you don't want to do it on your drawing, do it on a scratch paper first to see if you like the effect. And I'm really digging that glowing effect kind of a lot. Okay. I'd like a little more in this corner. Kind of coming down. Get more dynamic stuff going on in that sky. And then, maybe a little more here. A few touches back here. Don't worry if you get a color down and it looks too dark. Just try to blend it or pat it out and um, see if that helps. Generally, it helps pretty well. Uh, put some gold on top. And then there. Alright, do I want to do 
think I'd better go out here. I'm looking at my camera to see where where I want things. I think that's enough darkness that I've got going on up here. And we'll put some some of this brown down here to help with balancing the piece. So if it's up here, but it's reflecting in the water, and you don't put any in your water, um, it's not going to visually balance your piece out. It'll look weird. So I recommend, you know, distributing color throughout your piece, even if you, if I threw in, say, a weird color right now, like a green or um, a bright orange or a dash of different purple, you don't want to put it just in one spot. You're going to want to put it here and then maybe dance a touch of it over here and down here and maybe just a lighter shade of it in the sky just to give your piece a little bit of visual cohesiveness. color that we used over here and I'm gonna put it like I'm gonna hop skip it back here I'm letting it make just graze over the texture of the paper and then here Yeah, see how it pulls that, pushes that line way back there? I yeah, dig it. And I'm going to do a little bit in my waves. And I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to blend it out. And if I do blend it out accidentally, I'm going to come back in and, and throw it back in. There. Like that. Maybe a little heavier. at the very base of those waves, like that, yeah, and then at the very base of this one, and I'm not going to blend it out until I absolutely decide that I don't want it to be where it is, and I'll graze through right here, because this crashing wave is not all crashing at the same level at the same time and I feel like a lot of wave paintings have that one little mistake like your wave is even across it's and not I mean I imagine it happens sometimes but not a lot right let's get some texture Going up like that, and maybe some right here, and some right here, and then over here, just some speckles of darkness, because we're going to go, we're about to go in over the top of this with a lighter color, but I don't think I'm going to use whites. I think I might use... A slightly different color. Let's pull that back. We'll put in a few. A few ripples of dark water to balance out our lights. Like so. So far, you guys, I am completely digging this. All right, let's... Okay. Like that. And then, let's lay you down. I don't want to use white. Let's try this. 
see. I have this almost white yellow. And then there's this almost white cream. And I'll show you them against the white so that you can see the difference. Um, come on, focus. There we go. Thinking of this one and this one for the, for the for the glowy whites. Instead of using direct white, I think that would be too much too bright. So I'm gonna put that back. And I think I would like to start with this more creamy one. Because this might be too bright. Um yeah, maybe we'll start. Put a little in the sky and see how we like it. With each one. Let's let's do them side by side. Which one do we really like best? Subtle. It's too subtle to know. Let's do a little heavier application. Mm. I don't know. Maybe both? Softer yellow glow better than the cream. So we'll put the cream back. And we'll go with my, my soft yellow. It looks like pressing into the paper rather than sliding across the paper. Kind of press and drag just a touch fills that tooth and disguises it rather than making it. See how you can see the tooth here, but not so much here. Yeah, I like that better. I'm gonna go in here and this spot I want to glow. Out. Right. Out. And then. Do a little bit of that. A little bit of patting. Pat, pat, pat. Another application. really have a, I do not have a soft, like, let's get a clean one, let's do, are you clean? You are, okay, clean, mm -hmm. let's see if we can dirty it up a bit with the actual color. That pads out too much. And I'll just put a heavy application down. And then move it around. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Okay, dig it. Mm -mm -mm. Dig it, dig it. And then a little bit of glow here. And this white spot is a glow that I want to keep. Mm 
within that cloud area. Nice. I want this to be brighter though. So I might put a touch of white over the top of this area. Is that helping? It is. Stop fussing with that bright white line right there. And put a little bit of yellow here and there. Okay. this in here and there back here because I'm going to go back in over it with a bit of orange too. So this orange color How's that? Yeah, I dig it. All right. Let's be bold. super bold right now. Is it effective? It is. They went in timid before and got the soft golden layers down and now I'm going over the top and really going to make it pop where I want it to be shinier, more, more um, vibrant. kind of scumbling around creating abstract shapes and shines back and forth with this soft yellow and the vibrant orange instead of blending it out I'm just patting it into the paper that way we can go over it and get more texture down if we need to. How's that? Are we digging it? Uh, yeah, I am actually. There we go. Getting a little bit of other direction going on. I'm here. 
using that purple yeah, to give some depth to the dark spots in my clouds. Just kind of patting in a line and then pat dragging it along. Press down and a little pull in the direction you want the wispy part to be, like that. Be a little more bold with it, I guess. Considering this is my second pastel piece in a couple of days, I might as well go bold or go home, right? <laughs> I'm already home. I amused myself. <laughs> there, and then up in this corner. And like I said, if you put the purples down here, you might want to put some of most of them in the sky as well, because reflections. I mean, it's not going to make a lot of sense for the water to have reflections that aren't already in the sky. How's that? That's pretty great. All right. And I think I'm like a little, 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 little bit over here. Remember, if it gets too dark, you can always blend it out a little bit and put a lighter color over the top to kind of soften it. So if you make a spot that you're not really pleased with, you can make adjustments. Mmm, I am digging it. Alright, let's put, I think, a few more. Purple wisps at the top of these glows, like that. Nice, nice, nice. And I'm gonna put some here. I really push them in. There. I like it. And then maybe. Am I getting, I'm going to take the camera turning off as a sign that I'm getting carried away with the purple. Put that down. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with my oranges and really kind of throw those in where I want them to glow the most. Kind of above this darker cloud area. And then up here. And then I want it streaked in there, like that. And then I want some up here. Lightly grazing this paper. Pat, pat, pat. I'm gonna pat that color in. Yeah, digging it. All right. And then maybe here. Kind of blended with that purple and make a darker orange in between our bright and light spots. Yeah, dig it. Alright, let's put a little more here. Grab some of this purple. There we go. Nice. Alright. And then... There. Mm. 
Poofy spots over here. Brightness kind of below the dark parts, right? That makes sense. Does that make sense? It does. I dig it. Okay, I'm thoroughly enjoying painting clouds. Kind of like I enjoy painting jellyfish. I love painting jellyfish. Want to know why? Because it's kind of super hard to mess them up. They're very organic. Um, it's like trees. Trees are so varied and come in such a wide variety of just crazy wonderful shapes that you kind of can mess them up. So they are fun to draw. And I have a lot of extra debris on the page, which we're going to tap off in a minute here. I'm going to untake because it's getting to the point where I can't really tell what I want to keep and what I want to blend. So let's throw down some more orange. And then. Actually, I want a little more of this purple over here. Kind of patting the color down. And give it a little push and pull. Push down, pull back. Like that. And I want a little more here. Give it a nice little, little blend out like that. Okay, and then maybe our soft yellow can go just here. Do we like that? Yeah. Alright, I'm digging my sky so far. Getting super crumbly on the page. Super crumbly. Which is probably a sign that the paper is not going to take much more pigment in this area. So maybe I should just call it, call it done in that spot, right? And that's enough glow through there. And I would like a little bit here. Just a couple dots up here. To give it some interest, like some of this kind of scooching that way, like so. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right, what do I what do I have going on? Let's do. There. Kind of soften this good. And I think, aside from close in right here, I'm pretty done with the sky at this point. Okay. 
Good. Sorry, I got super quiet. Um, I will, if I remember, I'll, hopefully it's not too boring when I get quiet. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to promise to um, put music in here and there when I'm really not going to want to do that. I'm putting some plum up here. Some of this plum color that I have in the dark, dark spots down below. I'm going to put it in the dark, dark spots up here as well. I'm tapping it on and tap, patting it in. And I'm, I have different kinds of uh, pastel paper too. I have a, a one that's supposed to be more sanded feel, like a sanded look to it. And it's supposed to take much more pigment than this. So we'll see. We'll try that one next. When my next pastel pieces. We'll give that a whirl. Let's let this blow on the bottom of these two. Just kind of leave it. Kind of soft textures. Is there any part of the sky that looks weird? I'm sure for some people the whole thing looks weird. Alright, I'm going to set, set some of those down. I'm going to come in here. And I'm really going to be bold and get my color, my, my water in. And there goes my phone once again. Forgot to put it on a vibrate. Alright, I take that. And pat that whole line in. Pat that down. I'm finding the patting it down to be very useful. Um, let's get in a little bit of on the texture throughout. Good there. And then at the bottom of this wave. And then a little bit back here in the distance. Like that. For the water area, I'm keeping a lot of the textures. Except for maybe back here in some spots. the whole thing just here and there. Alright, moving on to the waves. And this beach right here. Okay. Which actually looks pretty cool right now. I'm, uh, I'm liking the glow of the paper through and the different um, textures. My hands are too dirty. Let's 
I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick, you guys. One hot second. If it gets to a point where you want to blend in a cleaner area and your hands are too dirty, just pause them. I mean, you could wash them or wipe them. I guess I could. Maybe just use a paper towel to get some of the excess off. That works. Then I don't have to stop what I'm doing. There. How's that look? Glowy? It does. That's awesome. This is all trial and error. I, like I said in my last video, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just playing with my art supplies and, and going with them. Um, back here. Lots of glitter and glow. And that ocean. Yeah, I dig that. Alright, maybe... I don't know if I want to put more plum in it, but I do want to put more purple in it. be on the bottom edge of it a bit and then where we want some dark ripples we can put more of that purple and let it graze over the paper kind of over here a bit more like that okay and then maybe a little bit more on this edge Remember what direction your waves are rolling. This, kind of this direction. Don't forget to, to keep your, some of your lines going that way. Right? Yeah, dig it. I dig it. All right. All right. And our glow, right? And this one kind of curls. So a little splashing. A few, 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 few direction lines like that. And then more splash dots where it's crumb like. Waves are very messy, right? So be messy. Don't worry about being neat and tidy. Make splash marks. I'm gonna tap, 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 and twist the pastel as I go. And there's our wave. Look at that. That looks so badass. Let's do more tapping. I apologize if the noise bothers you. Is it shaking the camera a lot? I hope not. <laughs> like that. And this soft yellow was definitely the way to go. Super pleased about that. Let's push some of those shadows back on this wave. And then I want, I want this one to be coming this kind of Okay, and then press and wiggle. Nice. Alright, yeah, I 
dig that. I'm not going to mess with that too much more. I am going to wipe off my chalk. See how it cleans it right up. And then go in back here. And throw in some distant glows, not too many. Wipe your chalk off as you go, because it's definitely going to pick up a bunch of stuff as you go. I might have too much back there, so we'll call that good there. And then this wave right here, we've got some glow underneath and above. How's that? Oh, I so dig this. I want some more of this orange in here too. purple a bit. That creates some nice textures, right? Oops. I put that purple down. And then Kind of um, up and down shapes because waves do that. sparkly back here. Is that helping? Let's use the other end. Super sparkly specs. Well, I dig it. Okay, let's work on this wave over here. And we're just going to get the top in like so. There. Yeah, if it gets a little too sparkly, I might go in and soften that with the orange. Good. And then maybe and this whole wave right here is Tap and pull. Pull when you lift up. Kind of pull it away. And make those little abstract marks. Remember we wanted this one to go all the way off the page. Like that. back and then add our sparkle. Looking downright chaotic, which is awesome. 
And I want an ultra shiny spot here. Okay, and then let's get in our muddy wave. I'm just going to kind of blend these colors together with the yellow and see what happens. If it's mu not muddy enough, I'll go back over it with that plum or purple here and there. Right. Pushing back up, up like that, and out like that. All right, and then, and then I'd like this to be even less yellow. So maybe we will come in with some white here and there, just here and there though, because I have a little bit in the sky, so. Little sparkles here and there is not a bad thing. Mm. Okay. I want this to stay pretty dark through here. But there's the top of my wave right here. Coming down. And here. Kind of blending this part a bit. How's that look? It's all right. I need to darken some of that the back up though. Where's that purple? Yeah, that's nice. Just on the bottom edge where the wave meets the sand and then a couple speckles inside the top of the wave to give it some dimension. And then there's another little bit curling here. And through here. Tap, 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 tap. And down here on this bottom part. How's that looking? Good, good, good. And then maybe just a touch of white sparkle. And a couple spots. a little too uniform. Break it up. There we go. Are we going to mess with this much more? I don't think so. I'm going to do a little more glow here, but I think I'm going to use my gold. Kind of blend that this way, that way. Okay.
almost done. Just getting in some... I want this to look a little more sand. Like there's dark splotches off the beach, but... Maybe soften them with this orange a bit. Yeah, that's better. Got our sky reflecting kind of harshly down here. Nice. Digging it. And then we've got the glow up here. Drag that out like that. Alright, kind of digging that too. Maybe soften that out there. Not liking how long that is. I think I'm I think I'm prepared to call this done. Um my instinct, which is probably completely wrong, is to super blend this and then go back over the top of it. <laughs> that instinct could be very, very wrong. in this horizon line a bit before I tap the paper off. I'm not blending at all, I'm just pushing into the paper by patting down, straight down. Pat, 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 pat. It didn't seem to take away from the piece. Um. <laughs> Boil it if I do that. Kind of. My instinct's wrong, probably. I'd like to drag some of this gold yellow down here. So, all right, I'm going to stop because, because I feel like it's, I feel like I could stop and it's done. That's why. Okay, let's, let's take the tape off. We're going to scooch, 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 and then I'm going to gently lift it up. I prefer it didn't pop off. 
gently. Come on. And then there. Upper one, pull away at a diagonal like that. Oh, uh, that crisp edge, you guys, it's so fantastic. Oh, getting carried away, going too fast. It's all right. We'll do because I put the top and the bottom on last. We'll do this bottom edge like so. And if you, I'm not worrying about today because this is a practice piece, but if you're worried about the actual paper coming off on your tape, heat your tape up with a, a heat tool or hair dryer first, and it'll soften the glue, and you won't have that that pull away that tearing problem quite so badly. Also going a little slower helps. Slower, more gentle than I'm being. There, like that. And then the last piece of tape. Come on. Come on. Don't be difficult. Thank you. It's stuck to the table again. There we go. get this off without ruining the piece. Pulling it down and away. Good. Yay! Oh, look at it. That's fantastic. Alright, let's move the board. And there we go. There is our piece. I'm going to zoom way in. Way, way in so you can really get a good look at her. Scooch you guys up. Scooch, scooch. There we go. Look at her. I'm very happy with it. I'm digging all the purples and yellows and creams. Um, and then here is a close up of all the textures, which I desperately want to blend out. So maybe this paper isn't for me. Maybe I need to find a paper that I can use in a more um, smooth fashion. But overall, are we digging it? Do we dig it? I don't know. I think I do. <laughs> I'll zoom out and show you all the colors we used. Didn't use that guy. We used these and these. These are the colors we used. Let's let's put two roly polies over here. So we have our plum and purple, just a touch of white and cream and kind of an orange. And then touches of this was our background, touches of the gold throughout here and there, as you know the mood struck. Yeah. Alright, there's our video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!